What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. This has been a really exciting week in the world of the Pokemon trading card game. Not only did we get Champion's Path completely revealed, we also have translations for all of the cards from Japan's upcoming set, Shocking Volt Tackle, which is rumored to be making up a large portion of our upcoming TCG set, Vivid Voltage. There's some really exciting new cards from the set that I can't wait to show off. Let's check them out. Let's take a look at all 100 Shocking Volt Tackle cards. Shocking Volt is Japan's next set. It set releases on Friday, and the Secret Rare cards will be re revealed over the course of the coming week. Uh, the cards from this set will become a part of our November set, Vivid Voltage. That set will also be comprised of cards from Legendary Heartbeat, uh, including its amazing rare Pokemon. And I think that... I've already I've seen a lot of these cards. I'm really excited about them. There's some really cool card design going on, some really amazing artwork, and I can't wait to show them off on stream. First of all, we have got that Shiftery. It's been making rounds on Twitter. I've seen this on social media. Shiftery, 150 HP and its ability Tengu's Proxy. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, the effect of each supporter card in your opponent's hand becomes draw three cards from your deck. So no boss's orders, no research, no Marnie. They're all, oops, all hop. That's what your opponent's hand becomes. It's like, oops, all how, oops, all Sharon. It's just all, it's all this, uh, yeah, Sharonification. Yes, it's all hopification. It's all just, that's it, Tierno, right? Does Tierno draw three? I mean, anyways, there's all these draw three supporters and your opponent's, you know, well-designed deck with all these various supporter cards that do different things. Now they all just turn into draw three cards. And its attack is not bad either. It's fan tornado attack, deals 110 damage, and you may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon. I think that's really cool. There's also the new Ninjask and Shedinja cards. Ninjask has this ability shell out. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may search your deck for a Shedinja and put it onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. So we've seen this kind of ability before, but, you know, in order to kind of take advantage of, you know, this card, I mean, what, what's the Ninjask without the Shedinja, right? What does the Shedinja do? We got to go look at the Shedinja, right? Because that's the whole point of playing the Ninjask is to get the Shedinja into play so we would be remiss if we didn't go and take a look at that immediately shedinja is a basic pokemon and it's got this ability wonder shell this card can only be put into play with ninjask's shell out ability this card can't even be put into play when setting up a match so it's a basic pokemon that you can't start you can't it's like a fossil in that way you can't start it but then you can't put it into play either unless it's coming into play with Ninjask's ability, which interesting is I've been thinking about this, which Silent Lab would stop it, right? So if you had a Silent Lab in play, you could put this thing straight into the onto the bench. And Silent Lab is a, uh, a stadium card from uh, from expanded format, right? So that's kind of interesting. If you had a Muck, right, with the Power of Alchemy ability, you could just put this straight into play as well, because Muck turns off all abilities of a garbador you know if you had a garbador in play it turns off all abilities you just put this thing right down in play so that's kind of interesting there are ways to get around that but none in standard format and then its attack is really cool squeeze life three colorless energy put damage counters on your opponent's active pokemon until its remaining hp is 10 this kind of thing has been combined with snipe attacks has been combined with poison right you kind of think there's a galarian slowbro v you could poison and then uh, put your opponent's hp down to 10 and then they get ko'd between turns so we've seen this kind of thing before there's eradicate in expanded format that has a very similar kind of attack i do wish that the shedinja was an evolved pokemon so that you could use this attack with triple acceleration energy but i still think it is very cool and a neat little card only 30 hp the definite of a glass cannon moving back on up we've also got orbital v and orbital v max i think these cards are really cool i've been looking at them a lot lately and i think as far as grass types i really love orbital v max's wonder beam ability once during your turn before you attack if this pokemon's your active pokemon you may put one damage counter on each of your opponent's pokemon i think that kind of ability is very strong so if you can 
build your deck somehow to keep the Orbital V Max alive and keep spreading that damage counter, you know, those damage counters on your opponent's side of the field, that can really add up. And Orbital V Max's attack is actually pretty good as well for grass and a colorless. G Max Wave does 50 damage plus 50 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you're dealing 150 for two if your opponent has just two energy attached to, uh, you know, attached to them. And uh, if your opponent's got three, which is pretty common, there's a lot of attackers that have three, uh, three energy, you know, then you're going to be dealing 200 for two, which is pretty good. And then you figure it says once during your turn, if this Pokemon's your active Pokemon, you may put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. So each Orbeetle VMAX can use that ability. So if you have three Orbeetle VMAX in play and you have a U-turn board on one, right, you could use the ability once. You could play switch, use the ability with the second one, and then you could retreat for free using the U-turn board, and you could do the ability with a third one. So if you have, you know, three or four Orbital VMAX in play, you can do 10 damage a bunch of different times. I think this card has a lot of potential, and I think the card is really cool and just really well designed. I just like the design of the card. I think the ability is neat. Uh, it's only got 310 HP, and yes, it is grass type, but I do think that... Uh, I think the card is neat, and I wonder if there are going to be some other kind of cards that we see combined with this. Yes, you could Bird Keeper, you could switch. There's a lot of different ways to kind of switch in and out of your various Orbital V maxes, and I think that that's just a very cool, well designed card. Orbital V's got two attacks. Flatter for one grass deals 20 damage. You may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, kind of, you know, tying in with that kind of hit and run switch kind of uh, style of play. And then Mystery Wave for a Grass and a Colorless deals 50 plus damage. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So that same kind of effect as the Orbital V Max. And of course, what would a Pokemon trading card game set in year 2020 be without a nice holographic Charizard? Let's take a look at Charizard here. Evolves from Charmeleon. Yes, its ability battle sense once during your turn. You may look at the top three cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, and then discard the other cards. And that ability also ties into its attack, King Blaze. It does 100 plus damage. This attack does 50 more damage for each Leon in your discard pile. Leon is a supporter that you can play, and it adds 30 damage to your opponent's attacks during that turn. So theoretically, if you got four Leon in your discard pile, and you played Leon, during your turn, you could deal 330 damage, which one hit KOs all the Pokemon VMAX except for Eternatus and Snorlax, but it's close. Vitality Ban. Vitality Ban could get you there. But, you know, so the, the attack has some very high end potential, as Charizard's attacks usually do. Almost all Charizard's big damage, really hard to get there. That's kind of the that's kind of the name of Charizard. That's just exactly what Charizard always does. Ever since base sets had a big number on the attack, really difficult to power it up. But uh, it does only cost two fire energy. And if they release cards that kind of help you to get supporters into the discard pile, things like that, you know, you could be dealing a decent chunk of damage. Also, 170 HP for a stage two Pokemon is a nice, respectable amount of HP. I really love the new evolutions that have been revealed in this set as well. They've all got this ability where they, if they're wearing a memory charm or a memory capsule, which is a new tool card from this shocking vault set, they kind of unleash some new ability if they are wearing that uh, that memory capsule. So the Flareon says if this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached to it, each player's grass Pokemon in play has no abilities. So it's kind of this situational tech obviously if you're thinking right now you know what grass abilities do i want to turn off obviously if rillaboom was huge you'd be like oh that's kind of cool right but uh i like that kind of selective you know techie kind of design of the card i think that's pretty neat if there was ever a big grass ability that you wanted to turn off say or beetle you know maybe you could do that with the flareon and the memory capsule and then for two fire and a colorless does a hundred damage there is a macargo kind of just does some base vanilla 180 for four you have to discard two talon flame this is my favorite card in the set i'm pretty sure this is it this is my favorite card in the set i've been thinking about this card a lot it's amazing for one colorless energy fast flight if you go first you can use the, this attack on your first turn discard your hand draw six cards that's 
phenomenal. It's got free retreat. It's got 190 HP. It's attack fast flight can be used for a colorless energy. You can use capture energy. You can use grass energy. You could use fire energy. You could use water energy. Talonflame is a beautifully designed card. The artwork's incredible and just an awesome splashable utility Pokemon. Free retreat, 190 HP, amazing first attack that you can use on the first turn of the game going first and a fighting resistance of 30. I could see setup decks playing this card. I could see Mad Party playing this card. Imagine Mad Party. All of a sudden, now you can actually have a pretty good turn with Mad Party going first. You could do Dene, you could use Talonflame. Now imagine how much of your deck can you dig through playing a deck like, you know, Mad Party on the first turn of the game thanks to Talonflame. I think it's a really interesting card and I think it's going to help set up setup decks. I think it's going to help set up decks that rely on non-V, non-GX Pokemon generally. It's going to give them a kind of extra draw boost that they've been seeking. A lot of these decks, the non-GX decks, uh, you know, they don't, uh, they don't do a lot on the first couple turns of the game. So it's a nice alternative to Zacian V. Zacian V's Intrepid Sword has kind of been one of the most popular ways to end your turn as a setup deck. I think that Talonflame offers a nice alternative to Zashi and V. And, you know, Zashi and V draws three cards, Talonflame, discard, draw six. And I think there's going to be uh, some decks that really want that discard effect, right? Uh, there's going to be, like Mad Party, for instance. Some decks are really going to value that. They would rather discard than draw three at the end of the turn. So they will choose to play Talonflame, whereas some decks are really going to still want to draw three to uh to end the turn so i think that that's very good it's very valuable splashable card great card design uh if it wasn't for marnie marnie is the arch nemesis of this card okay marnie ruins everything talonflame stands for talonflame is like okay i want my deck to set up fast consistently i want to you know allow the player piloting me to have a nice turn too and then Marnie just comes in and ruins that and sets your nice six card hand a four instead. Okay, so yeah, you know, Talonflame's amazing. It helps you set up. Marnie comes in, you know, is like, all right, here's a four card hand instead. So I still think, um, I still think that that is uh, that is very good. Crimson Wings, 160 damage, discard an energy from this Pokemon. Only one energy. I like that. A lot of fire attacks kind of require two energy to be discarded i think the fact that crimson wings only needs one to be discarded and it deals 160 damage which still one hit ko's to denny it's still two hit ko's all v maxes 160 is the new 180 160 is the new 210 160 is where you want to be for is it's the minimum you have to be hitting 160 damage as an attack you one hit ko to denny you two hit ko v maxes that's right where you want to be that's right on the money it's like you know for a card that's not going to be one hit KOing much you need to one hit ko to denny and you need to two hit ko v maxes so 160 damage is definitely welcome there and at one hit KOs, the popular zashi and v so not a bad card at all you know baby blacephalon decks could play this uh, i think that uh you know, Mad Party decks could play this. Any deck could play this card. It's one of the reasons that I love it. And it's going to be very high on my rating list of cards from uh, Vivid Voltage. Absolutely. Got a lot to say about Talonflame, chat. Up next, we've got Vaporeon with its ability Torrent Awakening. If this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached to it, each player's fire Pokemon in play has no abilities. So, so again, that kind of selective ability denial, I think that's very cool. The artwork's phenomenal on this as well. And for water and a colorless, it does 70 damage. A new Wailord. Look at that artwork. Wailord is incredible. I love, if you look closely, you could see the water dripping off of its face. It's just so incredible. Uh, and the ability is pretty cool as well. Wailord, uh, whenever you attach a water energy from your hand to this Pokemon, heal all special conditions, and then Hydro Pump, four colorless energies, says 10 damage plus 40 more for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So a big, beefy whale. Is it gonna be any better than Lapras VMAX or Caldeo in those Frost Moth decks or the new Wailord V? Probably not, but still a sick card with a sick artwork, so we definitely appreciate that. Samurott Shell Armor, if this Pokemon 
It takes 30 less damage from attacks. Okay, we've seen this kind of ability on quite a few Pokemon recently. Water and two colorless Aqua Wash, 120 damage, and you can return two energy cards from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. So a little energy denial there. It's kind of interesting. It's like Torkoal V, but the ugliest water starter of all time. Sorry. All right, moving on. We've got Galarian Darmanitan V and Galarian Darmanitan V Max. They are really, really cool, handsome cards, and they're pretty good as well. Let's check these guys out. Galarian Tarmanitan V. It's got two attacks for water and a colorless frozen headbutt. Does 50 damage. You flip a coin if heads. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. We'll take it. Two water and a colorless freezing fist. 190 damage. Does 32 itself. Some nice vanilla attacks there. If you're just if you're looking at a card that evolves into a VMAX, really you're just looking like, okay, you got enough HP. You know, are you just like usable in a pinch somewhere if I have to use you? And Darmanitan V checks all the boxes yeah it's got 220 hp and it's got some like attacks that you know don't make me hate the card so it gets a big thumbs up all right now who do you evolve into galarian darmanitan v max this is the dude we came to see 320 hp epic artwork for four water energy, max snowfall deals 200 damage. This attack also deals 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Wow, but wait, there's more. There's a new item card. It's actually a tool card printed in this set. It looks like some goggles. You know it. You love it. You've seen it. The Telephoto Scope. It's a Pokemon tool. And the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's bench Pokemon V and GX. <sighs> so that means that with your Galarian Darmanitan, if your opponent has a bench just filled with Pokemon GX and V, you're gonna be sniping 60 damage to all of those dudes. Mew from Unbroken Bonds. Wow, the stocks are rising on you, bud. We're all looking at Mew from Unbroken Bonds now, like, oh, thank God we got that card or else things get kind of hectic out here. I think that the Galarian Darmanitan VMAX uh, is very cool, very strong card. Uh, weakness to metal, unfortunately, but I do think that uh, I do think that the card design is very good, and I think that the attack is certainly powerful, and it's something that we could see more of in the months to come. I love all three of these cards. Cramorant with the continuous barrage attack does sixty times damage. You may discard any number of Aracuda. From your bench, this attack does 60 damage for each Aracuda discarded in this way. Let's take a moment. Cramorant appreciation moment here together, chat. Just look at this beautiful bird just eating its fish, enjoying its life on a rock in the middle of the river. This is a fantastic Cramorant artwork, and it's decent. It actually does a good amount of ener uh, damage for just two energy so you could use it with Twin Energy, which I love to see. Aracuda has an attack. Swarm, search your deck for up to two Aracuda and then put them onto your bench. That's nice. The Aracuda, get the other Aracudas into play. That's what I love to see. For a colorless energy, I'll take it. You could use Capture Energy and then get an Aracuda and then you could Swarm and get two more Aracuda and then all of a sudden you've got four Aracuda in play and then use the Cramorant and you could deal, what, six times four is 24? 240 damage, discarding all four Aracuda. What I love about this kind of one-two punch thing is that Cramorant is a basic Pokemon. I love that. Getting out evolved Pokemon is stressful, okay? I love that that's basic, and I love that this was basic. They're both basic Pokemon. What's not to love about that? That's great. I love it. Basic Pokemon are so stress-free, very easy to play. I could just quick ball for them, and there they are. Now they're on the bench. Great. And what's even better about this whole thing is that we've got a new supporter card on the way as well. You guys have seen Nessa. You get to choose up to four in any combination of water Pokemon and water energy from your discard pile and put them into your hand. So that means that the water gym trainer from Sword and Shield, Nessa, is going to be hooking us up with all of our Aracudas turn after turn so that we can continue attacking with Cramorant and pulling off big continuous barrage attacks. I think that that's a uh, fantastic card design. I like it, seems fun. Uh, very excited about that. And then Aracuda actually evolves, that's crazy, okay, into this spiny, ugly looking fish thing that apparently is called a Barascuda, you know, the more you know. 
But for one water energy, target skewer allows you to choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that's attacked as 20 damage to that Pokemon for each damage counter on it. That's pretty cool. So if you soften something up, dealing like 100 damage to it, you could finish it off and deal 200 damage to it. I mean, this is great for finishing off VMAXs on the bench. This is just a great snipe attack. It's like Esper, but evolved. And, you know, do I wish this was printed on a basic Pokemon? Yes, I mean, it would make, you know, certainly would make this better. But still, I mean, it, it evolves from the Aracuda, which already kind of goes with the Cramorant. So you can kind of see there is a kind of, there is a kind of deck going on here. You know, there, there was, these cards were designed to be together, and I really like the design of the cards. I think they're very cool and very creative. Pikachu V and Pikachu V Max. Is this chonky Pikachu V Max going to be the new best lightning attacker on the block? I think it might be. Pikachu V and Pikachu V Max, very cool. Obviously, the most iconic Pokemon there is, getting its very own V and V Max card charge. You get to search your deck for up to two lightning energy and attach them to this Pokemon. I love that. That's nice. If only you could use it on the first turn of the game going first, but that's fine. Probably be unfair if you could. Charge is very strong. If you go second, you just get some energy onto it and hope you don't get brave bladed. But it's still good for charging up your Pikachu V and Pikachu V Max. Thunderbolt, 200 damage. Discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. That's fine. But really, if we're going to be discarding all of our energy, we might as well be doing it on a chonky 310 HP Pikachu V Max. It's got one attack and one attack only, and it's the only one you're going to need. It deals 120 damage, and you can discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, the attack does 150 more damage. So you could deal... 270 damage, which can just about one-hit KO all tag team Pokemon GX, and just does a lot. I mean, one-hit KOs all V Pokemon, Zacians, all that, you know. Uh, we can one-hit KO all of those things, but you do have to discard all energy attached to the Pikachu. So obviously, the Pikachu V can help accelerate energy onto the Pikachu V Max. We also have Tapu Koko Prism Star, which can accelerate energy onto your Pokemon, and we also have the new Electrode, who's got a very reminiscent ab ability, a very familiar ability, and an incredible artwork. I know Natalie is going to be excited because she collects Trodes, and look at this beautiful new Trode we got here. It looks like he's about to explode. Very, very fun. Electrode has got an ability, Buzz Zap Generator. It's Ability name even recalls the original Buzz Zap from base set, which turns the Electrode into a, like a double rainbow energy. Buzz Zap Generator, once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon's on your bench, it has to be on your bench. You may knock out this Pokemon. If you do, you can search your deck for up to two Lightning Energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. So you could use Electrode to accelerate energy onto your Pikachu VMAX and then boom, do a lot of damage. Now the Pikachu VMAX, 270 damage is great for one hit KOing tag teams, great for one hit KOing V Pokemon. Uh, am I gonna want to discard three energy to knock out a Dedenne though? That kind of is what makes me feel bad about the Pikachu VMAX. I think the card is very cool, but its numbers are just a little bit awkward. I would rather have it done 160 damage and then plus 110, right? If you discard all energy, if it did base 160, then we'd be talking, right? I would even rather it do base 160 plus 100 more, just because then, uh, you know, then you can, uh, uh, you could, you could two KO V maxes without discarding, and you could also knock out to Denny's. So that makes me a little bit concerned, but uh, I still think that it's got some very powerful damage output there. And yes, the Electro can accelerate onto any. Pokemon, so you can accelerate onto your tag teams. You can juice up a peek around this way. That makes me extremely nervous, though. You're telling me I'm going to give up a prize to put two energy onto a three prize Pokemon that only has 240 HP? Risky, chat. That's risky. Exciting, but risky. But risky is the name of the game if you're playing Electrode anyway. We've got Jolteon with an ability here, Thunderclap Awakening. If this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached to it, each player's water Pokemon in play has no abilities. So this one targets water Pokemon. Very cool. The Lightning and two colorless, 90 damage. Zap Dose. The gorgeous artwork here. And I, I keep saying it, gorgeous artwork, but I want the creators of the cards and the Pokemon company to know that... The artwork is top notch. Keep doing what you're doing. This rocks, okay? I want them to know we need to, yep, shower them with love for that because these are some amazing 
artworks on you know pieces of art on these cards and uh and i definitely want to just make that known for sure you know from a collector's perspective these are some very beautiful cards to get your hands on for sure drill pack 20 damage uh, for one colorless energy and for two lightning and a colorless, you get to discard all energy attached to this Pokemon and you deal 160 snipe damage. Now, I don't exactly love, okay, having to discard all my energy from Zapdos, but that is a very powerful snipe attack. So, obviously, you can use Thunder, not Thunder Mountain, I've rotated, but you can use the Tapu Koko Prism Star, you can use the new Electro to juice up the Zapdos, but are you going to give up a prize just to discard all your energy the next turn only to deal 160 damage? That's asking a lot i mean that's just very disruptive on your own resources so i like this card you know how easy will it be to get the you know this uh you know get this energy onto it and then just to discard uh it's kind of unfortunate i think but you know maybe in some in some realm where there's some sort of additional support for lightning energy acceleration this could be a very powerful card especially uh, paired with the new tool card that increases your snipe damage by 30. You can one hit KO Crobats on the bench, Dedenne's on the bench, so on and so forth. Very cool card, and I think it's got potential for sure. We've got New Zip Strike, uh, just vanilla, does 70 damage. Handsome, though. Handsome. We've got a new Eel. Okay, unfortunately, this one doesn't have Dynamotor, or else all of our problems would be solved. But there's no Dynamotor on this electric. Sorry, chat. Gonna have to go back to Noble Victories if you want that one. We have got uh, Stun Fang, 60 damage to your opponent's next turn. If your opponent attached an energy from their hand to the defending Pokemon, plays six damage counters on their Pokemon. It's kind of interesting and, you know, super conditional. Uh, for Lightning and Two Colorless, Electric Sprinkler, 120 damage. Does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and one of your bench Pokemon. Alakazam V, what's up? Pokemon Company doesn't get to print Alakazams all the time for what I believe are legal reasons. But Alakazam is back because we didn't have to print Kadabra. So we've got Alakazam V and it's got two attacks. And I think this card is really cool. I mean, it just is. Alakazams have not been super great ever since, I want to say ever since base set. Yeah, the base set Alakazam is probably still the best Alakazam ever printed. All the other ones have been interesting, right? Interesting, pretty sure. Now, Alakazam V has got two interesting attacks. Your first one, Thought Spoon, put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, like that. Mew from Unbroken Bonds has a very similar attack. Uh, it's actually the same. And then Mind Ruler, 30 times damage. This attack does 30 damage times the number of cards in your opponent's hand. You ever been looking at your opponent's hand like, dang, you got like 20 cards in that hand. Alakazam V loves to see it, okay? Punishes your opponent for having a gigantic hand. I think that's kind of cool. And it is just a two prize Pokemon, only two energy cost to use it. Situational, but cool. So we'll take it. We don't get to see Alakazam every day. It's got a nice artwork, epic. There's like a mountain in the background, some side beams. I mean, what more do you want from the smartest Pokemon ever to live? We've also got a new Dusknoir, Dusknoir Stage 2 Pokemon. It's got the ability Ghost Bleach, as long as this Pokemon is in play. Special energy cards, they don't work. They have no effect, and they now provide only a colorless energy instead. So, you know, could be meaningful if special energy becomes super dominant in the metagame. Swoobat, unaware. Prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon done to this Pokemon. K, but it only does 70 for two. So, very cute, but, you know, not game-breaking. Whimsicott. All right, Whimsicott. You know I'm looking at Whimsicott cards. I love Whimsicott, and uh, I think this is adorable. Yes. So, Whimsicott. It's got an attack, triple draw for a colorless energy. Draw three cards from your deck. And then fly away, rush. 10 plus damage. You may discard as many tool cards from your Pokemon as you like. This attack does 40 more damage for each Pokemon tool card discarded in this way. Now you have six Pokemon in play. All right, theoretically, six Pokemon in play. Theoretically, they all have tools attached to them because we're about to do 250 damage for one energy with Whimsicott. All right, one Psychic Energy discard all the tool cards from your board. If you've got six in play, that's 250 damage. An expanded format. Think about what we could do and expand it. You could play the Genesect that allows you to attach two tool cards. There's also like Entes and random cards that you could just wear two tool cards attached to them. There's like an Ente, I think it's from uh, Primal Clash or around that era. And you could put two, two tool cards on them. And you could play Skyfield so you could have an even bigger bench. And I guess with all of the Entes, okay, so say you have... 
You can't have eight Entes. You can have four Entes and four. Oh, Sigalyph could wear four tools. Oh, you guys are right. Genius. All right. Sigalyph could wear four tools. So say with four Sigalyph on the bench, each wearing. All right, we're getting out the calculator chat. This is getting way too, way too big number for me. All right, calculator. Each Sigalyph can wear four tools. So that's four times four. We got four Sigalyphs. That's 16 tools on the Sigalyphs. And then we could have Entei also wearing four tools or two tools each. So we've got eight plus 16, right? And then our active Whimsicott is also wearing a tool. Okay. So plus one and now we're at 25. Okay. And it's times four. Okay. So now we're dealing. Yeah. What? 1000. It's a thousand damage. It could deal a thousand damage. The Whimsicott could deal a thousand damage. It's insane. Absolutely broken card. 1,010 damage. Yeah. Whimsicott can deal 1,010 damage all by itself. Broken card. All right. But in standard format, you're locked in at about 250, which is still big. Okay. Still big. 1,010 damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, certainly very epic. And Whimsicott is just one of the cutest Pokemon ever to have, you know, graced us with its presence. So we certainly welcome in a new, interesting looking Whimsicott. I do hope that for Whimsicott's sake, they print a Pokemon that can wear multiple tools in standard format because that is going to single handedly make this card better. But, uh, you know, being locked into just one tool card. Also, if they reprinted Adventure Bag. Yes, if they reprint Adventure Bag, that also would be very good for Whimsicott generally as well. There's an All Creamy. All right. Sweet Share. Once during your turn, when, this card's your, when you play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon, you may have each player draw a card. How fun. How fair. We each get to draw a card. Very nice. And thank you, Brandon, for those 100 bits cheering. 1,010 bits if you get that on video. Done. All right. Very cool. Uh, we've got a Machamp. Macho Revenge. Macho, Macho. <laughs> man, I want to be a Macho Man. Does all right. 20 damage for each fighting Pokemon in your discard pile. So theoretically, okay, chat. Theoretically, <laughs> it could do a lot of damage. I'm not going to do the math on this one. But you could have a lot. Okay, so say you have, you know, 20 fighting Pokemon in your discard pile, 20 times 20, you know, uh, we're dealing, what, 400, you know, damage. You could do uh, an awful lot, right? Uh, fan P and Dawn Fan. I actually like this Dawn Fan. All right, real talk. I do like this Dawn Fan. One energy, 120 damage. That's it. It's simple. It's a stage one with 150 HP, further proving that Decidueye was robbed with only 140 HP, 150 HP, stage one Pokemon, and an awesome attack, Earthquake, does 120 damage, uh, but it does do 20 damage to each of your own benched Pokemon. And thank you so much, Daver, for those 100 bits. Yes, four retreat cost means you could uh, you could wear whatever those, you know, the, the giant, you know, the thing that makes it have a lot more HP, or you could also... Uh, just put big charms on it or whatever. And uh, I don't think I would do that, though. You're going to want to put, like, you know, Vitality Band. You're going to want to put some sort of, like, damage-boosting effect on this so that you can actually one-hit KO. Buff padding. Thanks, chat. Knee pads. I always think of them as knee pads. That's what comes to my brain, but I know that it's not called knee pads. So thank you. Buff padding. You can put buff padding on this thing. Uh, it does 120 damage. That does not one-hit KO in Eternatus. But if you play it with the Fighting Dojo Stadium plus 40, okay, now we're doing 160 with the Vitality Band. You do have to be losing in order for that Fighting Dojo boost to give you plus 40, but you can one hit KO and turn it this with the Fighting Dojo and the Vitality Band. That will get you there. Yep, so pretty dope. All right, that's it, Dawn Pan. And then what? The Fan P has got Return Attack, 30 times damage. That's 30 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon. Okay, all right, I see you. It's pretty good, you know, similar to the... Uh, Similar to the uh, what, what, spear tomb, right? It's got a spear tomb type kind of thing, and you could do a ton of damage. You could put a uh, you know a belt on this thing. I mean, just imagine, you could do a lot of damage with that. That could really add up. We do you got hip on top? Always got to look at these guys. Nice. Got the gym leader in the background there. Cycle draw. Discard a card from your hand, then draw three. Cool. Twister kick. Fifty plus. If you played B B B B B from your hand during your turn, this attack does eighty more damage. All right. 
Tarak Yon. Guard press, 30 damage, and you take 30 less damage from attacks next turn. Ground power, 80 plus. If you have any stadium cards in play, does 80 more. 160, pretty good. Still costs three energy, though, so it is going to be a little bit tough to get all that energy onto your dude. Heavy slam on Mudsdale. 180 minus damage. This attack's damage is reduced by 30 for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Interesting. And then, uh, yeah, 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 grapple act. Here he is, the most handsome, most noble duck in all of the land. Galarian Surfetched V. Fighting fans everywhere love to see it. This is a cool card. It does a good amount of damage. Three for 200. Who guessed it was going to be 200? Who guessed? We took a look at this card about a month ago, and the attack damage output was not revealed. 200 is right on the money. That's just, it's exactly what you want to be doing. I think that 200 damage is nice. It doesn't want to KO Zacian's. But it does one hit KO Eternatus V Maxes, one hit KOs Crobats, one hit KOs to Denny's. So I like that. And the attack cost, importantly, also is two fighting and a colorless, which means that you can use the Colossal to power up your board, you know, to power up your Surfetched. And I like that because the fire energy will not get in the way since you can have a colorless attack cost. Now, the downside is during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. But. There's a very cool ability, Resolute Spear. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may move any amount of fighting energy from your other Pokemon to it. So cool! It's like if we had a fighting type Zacian that also had the ability of Heatran GX. It's like it's like if if Heatran GX were to breed with a Zacian. But we know Zacian can't breed because it's legendary, and Heatran can't breed either because it's legendary. But they just mentally connected and birthed a Galarian <laughs> surfest <to> me <laughs> is uh, what we got going on here, apparently, because, you know, they definitely got traits of both of those cards. So both of those cards came together and gave birth to one beautiful Mighty Duck. Love to see it, yes. And, of course, there are some, you know, damage buffs for your fighting Pokemon. Vitality Band, Fighting Dojo can get you that 220 to take the knockouts on Zacian, so that's pretty important. And I think that's having the ability to move energy from anywhere on the board to your uh, Galarian Surfesh is certainly going to be very good since you're going to be switching this card kind of in and out of the active position because of the downside of Meteor Smash because you're going to have to pivot it in and out of the active position anyway. So I like that maybe your Surfesh could tank a hit and then you could switch into a clean Surfesh. With the energy, you could just move it all on to the new one. So I really like that, and I think it's very cool. And unlike Sandaconda, you don't have to keep discarding your energy. So I like that you don't have to keep discarding your energy. Uh, I think that's very good, because Sandaconda can be weak if your opponent just gusts up the Colossal, right? Catches you slipping without, you know, that energy on board. Uh, I think that Surfetched is going to just generally be a better card than Sandaconda V. And Sandaconda V was kind of already seeing some success. Now, Sableye, you always have to look at Sableye right? Because Sableye has been known to have some really gnarly cards. So Sableye, for one energy, draw one card, torment, 30 damage, choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks. The defending Pokemon can't use that attack during your opponent's next turn. Cool little trapping card, um, but your opponent can just switch out of it. So not uh, going to be the strongest attack there. Drapion V, rack down, 70 damage, 210 HP, and a second attack, Hazard Claw for Dark and 3 Colorless, 130 damage, discard 2 energy, attach to this Pokemon, and leave your opponent's active Pokemon poisoned and paralyzed. Very cool. Is it better than the other dark cards that we have access to right now? I mean, you could play this with Hydreigon, right? So you could, uh, you know, rain energy into play with Hydreigon, and then you could get guaranteed paralyzed poison every turn. But every deck is playing like four switch right now. So, you know, how good is that guaranteed poison paralyzed going to be? Yeah, to be seen. But maybe in like a, a format somewhere where all of a sudden switch is not a four of in a lot of decks, then maybe we get to see this card see a little bit more success. Uh, I think that what these guys have some kind of interesting. Yes, it's a mill card, right? Both of these are mill cards. We've got Sandile. If you feel like putting four energy, just the low, low cost of four energy onto a 70 HP basic Pokemon with an adorable artwork, then you can mill three cards from your opponent's deck. Now, if that doesn't get you excited, for the low, low cost of three colorless energy, you could do it as well with Crocorox. So stage one, you can use triple acceleration energy. 
Uh, and it also has a very cute artwork, so I like that. And then if you know, you're know you not into that, for two energy, you could do it with the stage two Crocodile, who ironically has the worst artwork of the line. Sorry, Crocodile. It's not doing it for me. What are you, attacking me in, in the desert? Like, cool. Anyways, for two colorless energy, it also mills three cards. Now, is mill three going to be powerful enough to actually uh, you know, mill your opponent out of resources? Probably not, but I do think that the attacks are very cool, you know, and I like that the whole line uh, is synergized. The best best artwork of the line is absolutely uh, little Crocker Rock Jr. here, Sandile. Very good. Uh, we did see Trubbish as well. Gotta always look at Trubbish and Garbodor's. Garbodor's been, knows, been known to cause quite a stink. <laughs> Trubbish, lucky bag. Search your deck for an item card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Love to see that for two colorless energy. Very cool. And it combos well with Garbodor, Garb Cyclone. I love that attack name. Very good. 30 times damage. This attack does 30 damage times the number of Pokemon tool cards in your discard pile. But then you have to shuffle. Dang it. Got to shuffle them back into the deck. Why couldn't you just have been the Night March of tool cards? You would have been one of the best cards printed in recent history. But then you got to shuffle them all back into the deck. And we don't have Battle Compressor to put them back. So every turn is going to be a struggle. Just trying to get more and more tool cards into the discard pile. Could do a ton of damage, okay? But it undoes all the work that you did to get the tools into the discard pile every time you do it. So I wish, you know, I wish it stayed. But I think it is, uh, I think it is, it is very cool, okay? It's very cool. And maybe if this kind of attacker gets some support to help put things into the discard pile, then uh, then maybe we could see it. Yes, you could combine it with Whimsicott. All right, so chat's saying, okay, you put all the tools into play and then discard them with Whimsicott and then you could clean up with the Garbodor. This is true. You could use it as a finisher in your Whimsicott deck. I definitely don't mind that. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, that actually makes sense, right? Because you're going to want to put them back into the deck for the Whimsicott to reuse. So I think that that actually, that's it. Chat, thank you so much for tuning me into that idea. All right, Garbodor, Whimsicott. You attack with Whimsicott, you put them into the discard pile. You attack with Garbodor, you put them back into the deck. It's a beautiful harmony between two of the most lovely Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game. Garbodor and Whimsicott. Garbocott. Whimsa, Whimsador? Whimsagarb? Garb? Whimsy? Garbocot? I, I don't know. You guys decide. Beauty and the Beast. That's a good one. All right. Let's take a look at who else we've got over here. Galarian Berserker. Plunderclaw. 20 damage. Flip three coins. If you flipped at least one heads, your opponent reveals their hand. For each heads. Discard a trainer you find there. All right, Galarian Berserker. I see you. That is quite disruptive. Claw Slash does 90 damage. We've got Excadrill. Metal Edition. Drill Run. 30 damage, discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, Slashing Claw for two metal and colorless, deals 130 damage. We've got Pharaoh Thorn. It's been a pain in my side in that Pokemon Go Great Ball format. <laughs> yes, uh, Shaking Wing, or whatever the you know the lowest format. Yes, I've played against many of these. Shaking Swing, 30 times damage, attack is 30 damage times the number of metal energy attached to this Pokemon. That's cool. Then switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. That's neat. It's a little hit and run style attack that actually can get, you know, bigger and bigger, which is kind of neat. You know, if you uh, use Metal Saucer, you can accelerate energy onto it. And, uh, you know, with three energy, you're doing 90 for one hit and run. It's not bad. Not bad. But, you know, are you going to be able to have enough dolls to keep you going through the game? Eventually, your dolls are going to get knocked out. I think it's not bad. It's kind of cool, right? I'm into it. Oh, baby, we have got Aegislash V and Aegislash V Max. You saw my tweet. You already know. Decidueye players hate this. Decidueye players see this and they contemplate why they love a deck that is just going to have a counter printed <laughs> in a matter of months. <laughs> We've got Aegislash V. First and foremost, H slash V uh, is actually kind of the star in the show of the show in some ways. For two energy, it does 50 damage. And then Sonic Edge for two metal and a colorless does 130 damage. Ignore all effects on your opponent's active Pokemon when doing the damage. 
Oh my goodness, it goes through Decidueye, it goes through Obstagoon. You don't even need to evolve into the Aegislash VMAX because this card, who needs Duraludon? Who needs it? You don't even need that Duraludon anymore. The Duraludon's only got, you know, what, 130 HP? This thing's got 210 HP and still the metal uh, or the minus 30 resistance to grass which just is going to be a real thorn in Decidueye's side. I do hate to, to say that. Also, after an altered creation, you're going to be dealing 160 damage and going through all effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. If you play Vitality Ban, you're going to be dealing 170 damage and going through all effects. But 160 damage goes through one-hit KOs Decidueye, one-hit KOs Berserker, and with a Vitality Band and the ADP, you can one-hit KO a Decidueye with a Big Charm. Nice. Age Slash V, solving a lot of problems that weren't even problems. Duraludon was really bad enough. Age Slash V just comes in and, whew. And if you want to, if you're playing the Age Slash V, you could just play the Age Slash V Max. One more card, right? And then you've got this V Max Pokemon, deals 320 HP, and it's Attack Giant Slash, does 160 damage, plus 30 more damage for each prize card you have taken. So if you've taken four prize cards, that's 120 plus 160, that's 280 damage, which is just a lot of damage, right? So you're going to be dealing 280 to finish the game off, plus an altered creation boost. You're going to be dealing 310 damage if you've taken four prizes. If you've taken five prizes, then... Uh, you're going to be dealing, after an altered creation, the magic number, 340. No longer would you need boss boss game at the end of the game for ADP. You could just come swinging in and just, boom, one hit KO things with Aegislash VMAX. So that's kind of cool. I think that the card is certainly very handsome as well. So it's very, very neat. We've got another Duraludon, still with the minus 30 resistance to grass. It's got... Uh, Two attacks, Raging Claws, 20 plus damage, attack does 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon, and Power Blast. Uh, discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. Very cool. Snorlax, another setup card. Love to see it, right? I love to see this. Once during your turn, this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you draw cards until you have seven cards in your hand. It's like Tropical Beach, Tropical Snorlax. Fill your hand to seven. Setup decks, you know, if they want to play this card, it does have a three retreat cost, which is unfortunate, right? Because you can't pair it with Air Balloon. But it's got a very strong ability, and its attack is not that bad. Body Slam, 100 damage. Flip a coin if heads. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed, so 150% chance of paralysis is pretty sick. I could see Snorlax being played in Porygon Z decks. That's kind of the deck that I think that Snorlax makes sense in. It makes sense in Porygon Z because you can attack with it, right, and inflict damage, you know, which is, you know, and inflict paralysis which is pretty cool. And it can help you to set up without having to get the Zashi and V into play. So I think the Porygon Z could play this deck. I'm, I know, play this card. I'm not exactly sure how many other decks that this card is going to fit into super easily, but the ability is very strong. So I would not be surprised if this card does make its way into some other archetypes. Again, as I said previously with the Talonflame, Marnie kind of ruins everything, right? It's a very strong card. Fill your hand to seven. This is great. Now I'm already to four, and what was the point, right? So it's a very strong card, um, but Marnie, right? It's not like in a format with end. It's like even if you end your turn by drawing to seven and you get end, it doesn't matter because you haven't taken a prize yet, so you're still going to get six random cards, right? But uh, yeah, but uh, but Marnie does kind of get in the way. This card could be very good in a deck that plays scoop ups. That's true. Scoop ups and switches. I could kind of see this card just being played in decks that uh, that already play the Jirachi engine with the scoop ups and switches since you can use scoop up net. I could definitely see it kind of fitting in there. We've got a Swellow, energy assist, 40 damage. You may attach it to two basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon, but it is a stage one. But that is a vanilla energy accelerator. So you kind of have to kind of put that in in the noggin there, and then just kind of remember that that card is there uh, if we ever need it. There was a Rayquaza, honestly, that got printed a little while ago that kind of did a similar thing, but it just was never that good. Uh, so, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, will the stage one ever be, you know, that good for some reason, you know, just you know, having to set up stage one in order to get more energy to play. There's, you know, there's basic item acceleration in the, uh, in the trading card game right now. So it might just be a little bit too much to set up. We've got Exploud. 
with the round attack. All right, round does 50 damage for each Pokemon they have in play that has the round attack. So if we get some rounders, all right, I mean, as it is, if it's just this line, we see the Loudred and Exploud both have got the round attack. And that means with four, you could do 200. But if they put more rounders, you could do 300. And I haven't actually scoured every Pokemon in this list. So chat, let me know if there's any more rounders in the set. Or, or legal and standard format. Let me know. Because I haven't checked, are there more rounders or is it just the, these four? Because if it's just four, then we're capped out at 200. If, if you could go to six, then you could do 300. And 300 is certainly much better. It's like... 100 damage better than 200 and it gives you some flexibility because if you prize some then you can still get that uh that same damage output i'm getting uh getting some reports in the chat that there are no more rounders so right now we're just at four but if they print more especially a basic one i would love a basic rounder to go with this then that would be kind of interesting because you can use this attack for triple excel and you can use it for uh twin energy so i like that there's eight energy that can be used and you can attack with your Loudred. I mean, you don't even need to explode, right? Because, like, what's the point of doing this? I mean, it does 120 vanilla. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know. It's all about Loudred, really, who just does the same thing, right? Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. This one's way better. This one does 50 times. This one only does 20 times. Forget I said anything about Loudred. Loudred, yeah, yeah, yeah. His job is to evolve into Exploud, who does 50 times. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exploud is the, uh, the main dude here. Can use triple and twin, so we love to see that. Drone Rotom. Look at your opponent's hand, then look at the top card of your opponent's deck and return it to the top of their deck. In case you just want to take a peek, Drone Rotom is here for you. <laughs> we already talked about Telephotoscope. That card's insane for sure. Memory Capsule, Pokemon Tool. Uh, this The Pokemon this card is attached to can use any attack from its previous evolutions. We've seen this kind of effect before in Shrine of Memories, the stadium. We've seen it in Memory Energy, the energy card, and now we've seen it with memory capsule the tool card very cool i mean this has always had kind of a situational use in the pokemon trading card game um there could be some you know evolution lines that really enjoy that uh memory capsule but it will always be situational bia is like ends resolve but a little bit less which makes me a little bit nervous because we all know how ends resolve ended up being so we look at Bia and we're like, all right, are you the fighting acceleration that we've always dreamed of? You could obviously accelerate energy onto our Galarian Sir Fetched V. Galarian Sir Fetched V, where are you? Yes, here we are. You could accelerate energy onto the board and then you could use Galarian's Sir Fetched ability to kind of move it around. And I think that that's really cool, right? But Bia does require that you mill the top five cards of your deck in order to get those energy into play. So I think that that is, uh, is very interesting, right? Uh, you get to attach all energy cards, discard in the way, this way to your bench fighting Pokemon. You can accelerate special energy. Yes, obviously you can, but you know, how many times did you whiff on an ends resolve? Raise your hand in the chat if you've whiffed on an ends resolve. I've whiffed on an ends resolve. Raise your hand in the chat if you've ever whiffed a max elixir. I have also whiffed a max elixir, guilty of both. Whiffing Bia is not going to feel good. It's a supporter, okay? It's going to feel really bad. And it's one card less. It's one card less than Ends Resolve and Max Elixir. And we've both, we've all whiffed those cards, okay? So I'm just saying there could be some feel bads associated with the supporter. That being said, the supporter kind of is all we've got. I mean, it's either that or we're setting up a stage two Pokemon with Colossal. So pick your poison, right? That's what we got going on. We've got Leon, the supporter. During your turn, this Pokemon's attacks, uh, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Could fix a lot of math on things. I mean, there's certainly a lot of fighting Pokemon. They're very close to one hit KOing Eternatus VMAX. Uh, Leon could set them over the edge. Leon also um, can pair with the new Charizard that got printed, which does more damage for the amount of Leons you have in the discard pile. I think these cards are always situationally useful, right? Professor Kukui did plus 20 damage, but also importantly gave you that plus two draw, which was very welcome. Leon gives you plus 30 damage, but no additional effect. So I think Leon will be situationally played in decks that need to desperately fix math 
on some sort of situation, right? So it's nice to have a math fixer. It's nice that it's not just choice band or muscle band. Those cards would be incredibly broken right now. So I think, you know, Leon is fine. It's a nice little, nice little math fixer if you need it in your deck. League staff, draw two cards. If Wyndon Stadium is in play, you get to draw two more cards. It's like uh, a situational draw card. Do I love it? Nope. Situational, but it is a draw for if you happen to always have a Wyndon in play and your opponent never plays swell. We've also got Nessa, which we talked about already. It's a very strong supporter card. Hero's Bath. It's a stadium card in each basic Pokemon in play. It takes 20 less damage from opponent's attacks. Why did we buff basics more? I don't know, but maybe... Listen, chat, there are things about the Pokemon trading card game that we don't know, okay? Maybe VMAX Pokemon take over the world, and it's just VMAXs, as far as the eye could see. And maybe in a future world, basics actually just are kind of playing second fiddle to the VMAXs, right? Who are the real stars of the show. And maybe basics, eventually, somewhere in the distant future, needs some sort of buff. And maybe Hero's Bath is that, uh, you know, maybe Hero's Bath is that buff that they need. Maybe somewhere in the distant future. As it is right now, do basics need to take 20 less damage? Mm, maybe not. But there are a lot of, you know, counters. You know, you can play Swell. You can play Marshadow to bump the stadium. You just play counter stadiums, too. Um, I think that, you know, we saw a stadium like this exist before. What was it? There was the stadium. It was like the, for lightning and grass Pokemon. What was it, chat? Help, help me out. That card never saw play. I mean, basically not, right? That card was, was not very good at all. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about this. Do I think it's decent? Yeah. Um, but you know, that stadium, Aether Paradise. Thank you. Aether Foundation, Aether Paradise, whatever that stadium card was, that card did not see a lot of play. And I think it decreased by 30, right? So I'm just saying, like, it saw some play sometimes, but, you know, Hero's Bath does go on any type of Pokemon so long as it's a basic. So I think that that is, that is different, right? Uh, some people are saying, we played it in Bulu. Yes, okay, I did see some play in Bulu. I think this card could certainly see play, but I'm just saying, you know, it won't be like, it won't be insane. You can just count, you can simply counter the stadium, right? So I think that stadiums that do proactive things are generally better than defensive stadiums, generally speaking, right? Uh, Chaotic Swell is one of the po most powerful stadiums because it not only not only bumps your opponent's stadium, but it keeps them from easily putting another stadium into play that's very proactive, right? Giant Hearth is one of the best stadiums in the game. Viridian is one of the best stadiums in the game because they do something proactive. When you put the card into play, it does something instantly, Hero's Bath, you have to wait until your opponent maybe hits into it, right? So the card is good. The card is strong. I'm just trying to say, I'm trying to put it in perspective, right? Defensive stadiums, generally speaking, are not as good as proactive stadiums. But the combos are there. You can you can talk about the combos, right? You play with Double V. You can play with Lucario and Melmetal. Imagine Lucario and Melmetal after the GX attack, Full Metal Wall GX, with the Hero's Bath. Now we're starting to think like, okay, you know, with the metal goggles, so Lucario and Mel Metal's taking minus 30 for the full metal wall GX, taking minus 30 for the goggles and minus 20 from the stadium. Math is hard, but that's minus 80 damage. It's kind of nuts. So it is something to think about and certainly something to keep in mind. Winden Stadium. Whenever a player plays a Pokemon V Max in their hand during their turn to evolve a Pokemon V, heal 100 damage from that Pokemon. This is, this is a, a situational stadium. It is. So, it's a situational stadium. First of all, you know, you would have to be thinking like, okay, my Pokemon V are going to be taking a lot of damage before I evolve into Pokemon V maxes. For some reason, you know, I'm going to want to heal. Now, situationally good, if you're playing a deck where that kind of situation arises frequently, then the stadium makes sense. But if you're not playing a deck where that kind of situation happens all the time, you know, I guess you could play Wind and you know, in Eternatus, sometimes you go for the Power Excel and your Eternatus, you know, gets smacked. Your opponent would probably be pretty salty if you, like, fully healed that, you know. But that being said, is Winden Stadium going to take the place over any other stadium in Eternatus VMAX? I think Eternatus is probably one of the, you know, the VMAX decks where it kind of makes the most sense. Uh, you know, Senti Scorch too. you know, you could play it, but are you going to play, you know, Winden over Giant Hearth? Probably not. So just something to think about as well. Wash Water Energy, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides a Water Energy. Prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to the Water Pokemon this card is attached to. So no effects. No effects for you. Very good. And then the Special Metal Energy, Coating Metal Energy, 
Metal Pokemon this card is attached to has no weakness. So your Lucario Metal Metal can take minus 80 damage and have no weakness, baby. Let's go. All right. That's, uh, that's pretty rad. And that's the 100 cards from the upcoming, what is it? Shocking Volt Tackle sets, which is going to be a part of our upcoming Vivid Voltage set. Very excited about this set. I think Talonflame is probably the card that I'm the most stoked on. That card just is awesome, and I think it is very, very cool. So very excited about this set all in all, and I think there are some great, you know, great, amazing design cards here in this set. So major props to the Pokemon Company for creating a very cool set for us to play with, and I can't wait to get my hands on many of these cards. And that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, sub to the channel. You're here. Do you know only half the viewers are actually subbed to Tricky Jim? Thank you guys so much for subbing to the channel. Thank you guys for the viewership. Make sure to check out the Twitch stream if you have not already. Twitch.tv slash Tricky Jim. We stream live Pokemon trading card game content there every single weekday. Make sure to stop by the stream. We've got a really friendly crew over there and drop the stream a follow on Twitch. Also, if you have not already, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. We are always buying bulk singles, you name it. If you've got extra cards lying around the house and you want to get some cash for them, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. It's really easy to do. You just fill out a buy list with the cards you would like to sell us, send us the cards, and we send you the cash. It's also a great resource for buying singles. And if you're looking for the latest Pokemon trading card game online codes, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. That's it. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Peace.